Chapter 149 Hallelujah! Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in his Maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He adorneth the humble with salvation. Let the saints exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the nations and chastisements upon the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. He is the glory of all his saints. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, hallelujah. Praise you, Yah. Praise you, the Lord. Mention him. Think about him because, once again, he's the one who will redeem us. He is the one who will save us uh, as he always has, as he always does. Uh, we are those that are dispersed in all the earth, those that serve the Lord, those that do what he asks, and he will redeem us. As long as we do and we uh, accomplish those things that he has asked us to do. We're going to pick it up here in verse 1. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his, and his praise in the assembly of the saints. The saints, those that stand before the Lord, those that are correct, those that are lawful and that do the right thing. Sing unto the Lord. Um, sing uh, with a joyful voice. To sing is to boast to uh, let it be known uh, in a joyful way of of the Lord his and all that he has done. And we're going to find out the Lord has done magnificent things for us too. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let Israel, that's, that's those that contend, uh, rejoice in his maker, those that, the, the Lord who created him in his, the way that he is, this one who questions everything, who contends with the way it is, and, and we'll find out. He has the law inside. He has these ordinances and statutes, and he knows what's right and wrong. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. The king is the Lord. There is nobody else. It's Hashem. It's the presence of God himself. Let the children of Zion be joyful. Zion, that parched place, that marker, that place that represents the, where God visited before it with his judgments, with his ordinances and statutes, uh, that where he caused a return, even. And that's what the Lord's working on again. He's working on a return. Three, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Singing these praises, once again, boasting the Lord, praising his name in joy and, and greatness and magnificence with these twanging sounds, these things that cause to remember, these timbrels, these, these, uh, the, the sound of these, this, these rattlings, even kind of sounds like the chains of bondage rattling uh, to bring them to remembrance, the, these periods of where we were in bondage. Uh, let them praise his name in this dance and these cycles of life that keeps going around and around where the Lord just keeps redeeming his servant for. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. For the Lord does take pleasure in his people. His people, well, those that keep his ordinances, those that does what he asks, those that, that willingly do what the Lord ask them to do for their own good. He adorns them, the humble. They've humbled their self in the earth to not seek after all the wicked things, these wicked enjoyments of life um, that are taught to be okay. It's taught that this is all right. This is the good. This is okay. It's acceptable, and, and but not to the Lord. Five, let the saints exult in glory. Let them sing for joy let them sing for joy upon their beds. Let the saints exult in glory. 
Let them lift up. Let them raise up uh, their voice even in glory unto the Lord. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. These places that the Lord had given them to rest. Uh, the places where they lay uh, because they have stood before the Lord. Six, let the high praises for God be in their mouth and, two, and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let the high praises, the great praises, the, and that's to observe to do what God has asked you to do, to do what the Lord has asked you to do. That presence that we get through the ordinances and statutes, he speaks directly to your heart. Nobody has to tell you anything. And this two-edged sword in their hand, that's exactly what it is. It's the law of God, and it parteth both ways. It parteth both ways. It parteth the wicked. And as it does, it sets the good to the side. This is the portion. This is just like when we would um, offer a sacrifice, things it has to be divided. Uh, and it's the same. You, we get that same effect from this two-edged sword, this sword being the, the justice or that which represents judgment. Uh, it's the words of the Lord. Seven, to execute vengeance upon the nations and chastisements upon the peoples. To execute this vengeance upon the nation, it's 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 in a correcting manner, just like these chastisements are upon the peoples. It's a, it's correction. Uh, I believe the King James version says vengeance upon the heathen, and, and this and this is just the goyim or the nations um, who are not uh, Hebrews. But this this is a a form of, of vengeance because what happened was they they just like in the story of Babylon, uh, the Lord punishing the Israelites and he had sent Babylon in there to punish them. And Babylon thought they had done it by their own power, by some great power that they had over them, and we'll find out they began to exact harshly upon them. And this was the problem. This became a problem, wherefore the Lord did punish Babylon. Uh, but this word here, to correct the people, uh, to chastise the people, is tol tolkaka, and it means to this this good correction, because they should be able to see these examples that the Lord has made, and know that He is. He give them the law as well. Eight, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. And it is to bind. Uh, to bind is to, we can look at that as just that, to tie them up with these chains or with these that, that tie down or set into place. Well, these kings, these rulers, these ones who took up that position, the Lord puts them in that position. He's making an example out of them. And when they get in that position, the Lord has ways to, to bind them, to tie them down, and to make great examples out of them is what he does. And they're nobles with these fetters of iron. Because he binds them up, he binds them up with these laws and these ordinances and these statutes of, of men that men set. And that, that's what they, all the laws and orders were for in the beginning was to bind up those, not us, nine, to execute upon them the judgment written. He is the glory of all his saints. And it was to execute the judgment that was written. That you don't exalt yourself over others. He is God and there is no other. And he is the glory of all his saints. And that's those that stand before him and do what he has asked them to do. Hallelujah. Praise you, Yah. Praise you, the one that gives you the power and the strength Let's move forward. Psalms 150. Turn and return. <laughs> 